Hello everyone, ZeroBlade here, and today we'll be doing a quick rebuild and sound test of the KVD Fans Epoch TKL. So first a quick unboxing. Here we've got the spare PCB that I had included, uh, just in case I broke the one that comes with the kit. And here are the accessories. So the keyboard comes with a teal badge on the back and front. Um, I got a couple of alternate color blue and purple ones, just in case I decided to get some other keycaps on it. Uh, no, it goes there. Uh, let's, let's put that there. Okay, um, this is the daughter board for the uh, keyboard itself. There you can see Carryworks XKBD fans. Um, here are a few um, spare screws and a hex driver. And then we got the rubber feet and silicone uh, gaskets. I have no idea what this is, but uh, I'll just put it aside for now. Uh, the other side. So next up, we've got the actual PCB that comes with the kit. Um, it's pretty much the same. Um, solder only. This board did, did not come with a hot swap option. Um, but I personally had mine mill maxed because I cannot be bothered to solder things. Now, here we have the case itself. It is fairly hefty at about 3 kilograms. And then the carbon fiber plate. It has quite a lot of cutouts, um, a fairly skeletonized board, and no other plate options for this board except for carbon fiber. So let's put that back in the back, back, back in the back in the foam. Okay, there. And uh, okay, first let's get this box out of the way. There we go. Now for the board itself, it is a big, big chunky board um, with a huge, huge forehead. Um, no weight at all. This is just pure aluminum. Uh, no extra brass weight, internal or external. The finishing on this board is pretty good. The, there's no um, weird you know, marks on the anodization, it's nice and even. Um, really nothing to complain about uh, in terms of the finishing here for its price point, which comes in at about $400. So one annoying thing about this board is that the um, rubber feet uh, cover the screw holes at the bottom. Now. Understandably, this does look more aesthetic because it hides the screws, but at the same time, it's kind of annoying if you have to keep on having to take them out every time you want to adjust something inside the board. Originally, I built this board with a sheet of EVA foam in between to help sort of dampen the sound of the switches in the board, but it didn't fit. I had a few more sheets made and, well, those didn't fit either. Um, I also had some P foam cut uh, just to sort of the whole P foam meme that's so popular these days. The board only came with a carbon fiber plate, which I really didn't like because it was both rigid, but it sounded kind of hollow and plasticky. A fellow keyboard enthusiast helped me get an aluminum plate from the designer himself but the, the switch holes on the plate are so tight that I struggled with getting the switches installed. Now here we've got some Neapolitans. Oh man, these are so tight. It's so tight right now. So I'm gonna put the switches onto the plate, then install directly onto the PCB. The keyboard on the Dolch Pack 80 was what inspired me to get into custom mechanical keyboards. I joined the very first group buy for the keycaps years ago, but I never found a board that replicated the design. 
the board and parts shipped to a forwarder who then proceeded to lose it for like two months. I got the Yi and Portico in between, but eventually they found a package and it my way. I initially built the board using the original carbon fiber plate and some EVA foam, but it's gone through some several rebuilds for the feel and sound. The Epoch 80 is huge and chunky with bezels for miles, and the cuts on the top and bottom of the board mimic the original Dolch boards. The case itself is finished in a deep matte black without any issues on the anodization. It's a big and weighty board, clocking in at 3 kilos, even without any separate weights. Using the aluminum plate makes for a pretty loud and clacky board. Combined with the EVA foam at the bottom, it pretty much eliminates any flex, but the feel isn't harsh like the U80s. Even after several tries, the plate and PCB kept popping apart. Eventually I realized that maybe trying to jam a bunch of foam in between them wouldn't work. In the end, I ditched the EVA foam, leaving only the PE foam sheet, and it managed to work out somehow. Right, now to fit the daughter board cable on, and top on, screw in the bottom case. Overall, the board needs a lot of work when it comes to both sound and feel. The board's stock acoustics are pretty unpleasant with hollowness and ping, and fiber plate was not that comfortable to type on. Adding some foam and using a thick aluminum plate helped to deal with those issues, but it is by far the least pleasant board to use among the ones I own. Now I've spent about 4 months to get to this point, and honestly I don't really feel like doing yet another rebuild, but I still have a soft spot for the design and I'll probably keep the board until a better homage piece comes along the way. I initially configured the board with the Canon keys and Neapolitans, but those switches combined with the aluminum plate, the P foam, and the board's acoustics made for an offensively loud board. Like. Cherry MX Blue level painful. I decided to swap them out to some stock Duroc T1s. I figured I might as well record a sound test for both switches, so here you go. <laughs> 